Nice. Why don't we go ahead and say hi, YouTube, since you're probably going to get this either next week or the following week. Your upload schedule has been pretty nice. Yeah, hello, YouTube. Vimeo. Reddit. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing, Elite Barrio. I hope you're having a great day. Yeah, it's my, you know, first time watching Attack on Titan. So as we go through, let's just go ahead and analyze it. Oh, you're sick. Oh, but anyway, hi, YouTube. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're practicing that self-care, especially as we're going through. You guys already know the deal. We're going to go through. For those of you on here that are brand new, um, just know that, like, I do tend to stop and analyze, like, sections of it. I already have theories off of episode one, uh, which is insane to hear. I know. Trust me. I know. But, like, it's been on my mind since, like, Sunday when we watched it. Uh, almost continuously, like, we want theories. Oh, we'll get to them. We will get to them. Uh, especially just, like, in regards to the pressure and what this would do to kids growing up in this era. That was one particular area where, like... I completely, like, forgot to, like, touch on in episode one, which is, like, you know, some sort of the trauma that you can go through and belief system, like, schemas that we will develop off of this. But anyway, let me make sure that we're up and ready to go. Oh, there's that. Please remember to remind me really quick, for those of you on Twitch, if the sound is a little low, a little high, if it's overpowering me, just because there seems to be some, like, sound issues lately... So keep that in mind. And with that being said, let's just go ahead and jump into it. I, I'm I, I'm pumped, guys. We have a full stream night ahead. Oh, that's right. That's right. References. So one thing I'm I'm gonna ask you guys, because right off the bat, right off the that like instinct is, if humanity was driven to the point of extinction, right? Which is this goes into one of the theories that I was having is these giant ass walls that they do have, right? Which is like Wal Maria, Rose, and Cena. How did they create these things? Like, for me, like, you know, that's one thing that was completely, like, baffling my mind during, like, the week, right? And it's good. <sighs> Where, where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? Here we go. Sir? <laughs> Sir? Spoilers, please. No, I'm kidding. Don't, don't, don't spoil me. But, no, but, like, literally, that's one thing that was, like, completely baffling my mind. Because it, it was absolutely insane. Like, the more that I think about it, the more that, like, it seems so out of place, but yet in place, you know? Like, these giant-ass walls are able to go ahead and, like, keep this threat out, but yet at the same time, I don't know how to put it, like, keep threats in? If that makes sense? Like, by creating these walls, you also created, like, an interior threat, and you also have, like, this outside threat that's sort of happening at the same time. Hard work, elbow grease, and all work ethic, of course. That's what you get with the Ford 150. No, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, Elite Baru, yeah, you you should take a watch with, with us while we're going through. But that's a legit one of the big things. It's also because of the priest, the way that the priest was, like, uh, pushing it, right? Pushing his ideology in episode one over walls. It got me, or, like, just, like, in general, like, God and whatnot. And I was like, that's weird. So that's one of the things that I'm going to keep an eye on. I'm just trying to get more of a history on the walls itself. Uh, how were they created? And more specifically, why were they created in such a way that was like uh, pertinent or like, you know, like so important towards like humanity, I guess. Uh, it's kind of scary, though. It's kind of scary to think about because when you build up any huge walls, any form of resentment, even in yourself, and I will say this in a psychological sense, uh, the moment that you put up any walls, uh, not boundaries, boundaries are different, but walls in general, uh, you start closing yourself in from others. So in a way, you do start losing senses of uh, what you're allowed to do, how far you're allowed to stretch uh, as an individual and as a society, I'm guessing, right? Because at one point, you're also like, and this is what I'm meaning by internal and external threat, right? The external threats, of course, you have something out there that can completely decimate you. And the internal threat is not only do you have yourself like limited into what you can now do but you also have like everyone that's inside of there trying to fight for survival inside of it so it's a, sort of like cattle if that makes sense it is such a scary situation to be in but anyway i'll, I'll keep theorizing as we kept getting closer Damn, i'm so shocked dude this whole shit got destroyed instantly oh bro shut up someone eat him please 
See, that's... Oh. That's terrifying. <laughs> Let me pause right there. <laughs> Prasini, I don't believe that, uh, you again that you are not a manga reader. This anime is the same issue like with 3 I'm not. Just straight up. I've never read the manga. I've never read the light novel. I've never anything like that, bro. I'm a full ther full-time therapist, bro. 9 to 5. And I teach MMA from like 5 to 7, 5 to 8 some nights. Uh, plus notes that you have to put in that's usually like 8 to 10, 8 to 11 p.m. Uh, and everything I'm saying is actually backed by psychology. Sort of with episode 1 and all of the ReZero episodes, I've pretty much gone and shown exactly how I break down a character. Uh, the sociological imagination, Brenner's theories, nothing is out of the realm. Uh, I think that you should write books. Uh, I'm actually writing a book myself, but that's separate. Don't worry, I'm never going to go ahead and push that on the channel just because... I, I feel like that would be a lot of uh, pressure. I don't know how to put it. Like people would be like, oh, is that how you think? Uh, but what I will say is this. I feel like, uh, oh, uh, uh, I do have an idea for an anime and I'll throw this out there while we're, we're doing this. And that's sort of, and they know this already. A therapist in another world. So a therapist gets isekai and he just therapizes all the villains. That would be fire anime to watch. Uh, anyway. No, so like this is absolutely terrifying, right? Uh, especially in the grand magnitude of things, because, like, anytime that you see something that's bigger than you, that's already terrifying in and of itself. So imagine if you're going into a fight, right? And let's say that you're five foot five, right? And your opponent is, like, six five. Trust me, that foot difference really matters. The bigger they are, the taller they are. Uh, Kick-wise, punching-wise, uh, just anything-wise, like, it can be a lot more threatening, because that's why, like... Uh, weight classes exist inside of martial arts, you know, because it can do a lot more damage if you're a skinny person going up against someone that's significantly bigger or vice versa, right? Like, you just have to pay, pay very close attention to that. What I'm not understanding is this priest. What's up? Or this, like, person that's just, like, going at it. Please, please, please fuck him up. Please. I'm not... What I'm curious, okay. So I guess I can go ahead and ask you guys this as we're going through. What is Mikasa's relationship to Eren in that setting? You guys can be like, oh, it's like a sister, brother type relationship, right? Uh, fucking Christ, dude. But no, like, legitimately. Uh, because, like, every single time that, like, there's been an encounter, a situation that pops up, uh, you know, like, even in that first episode, like... It's always that protective role. Like, I don't know how to put it. Like, you guys know what I'm getting at, right? Like, with the bullies. Like, it was always, like, right next to them. Uh, with mom, like, listening to whatever or, like, what's happening there. This flashback we just got. Like, I'm not telling, but feel free to guess. Uh, let me fix my chair real quick. My butt is hurting, guys. Damn. We just got started and my butt's already going like crazy. Uh, no, the, the main reason that I'm going, like, mentioning this is, like, uh, you know, since episode one, which we're only one episode in, technically, uh, all that we've seen is essentially, like, this caring nature, the success of caring nature towards Aaron. So, I'm just curious as to what happened, uh, I'm sure that it'll get explained, yeah, like, in future episodes. 
Well, yeah. It's not something that I have to go read. Okay, cool. Yeah, because that's that's one of the big the big things that like I'm just curious about like how the relationship formed and why it formed and also why where this protective nature comes from. You know, uh, it can be very. At first, like if it's formed in a correct way, like say that uh, you were adopted into a family, right? And uh, I don't know, your parents told you, hey, you know what? You should really care about your brother, your sibling. Hey, Kreitz, how you doing? Um, you know, they, they give you all this information to try and care about your sibling and you're caring about your sibling and you're like, oh, yeah, no, my sibling's absolutely fantastic. OK, that's one way. But if it was formed out of a weird power dynamic issue or like trauma based event or anything like that, I can assure you, I can like from this moment. Right. And this is what I'm talking about, psychology in case uh, of anything. Right. Uh, if any form of attachment is made in the trauma based sector, it can become a toxic relationship really quickly. And that like, for example, now that Kraith is here, if say a traumatic base event happened and like I was told to go ahead and protect Kraith or you know, I was like, all right, like, Kratz is my brother. I'm going to go ahead and protect him. Uh, big tra like, traumatic event happened. I could go ahead and overextend that ability to where now I'm being used by Kratz without necessarily seeing the fact that that is happening. So it can flip its reversal due to that trauma nature, right? And sometimes we set these boundaries, these walls, if you will, that completely, uh, like, I don't know, blind you. To sort of like the good and the bad that someone can go ahead and enable. And vice versa as well. Because I feel like if that were the nature, Kratz would also kind of feel protected by me. But at the same time, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with something like that. And I'm pretty sure he'd get annoyed of me if like every single time there's an action, like I'm there like, no, Kratz, stop. Attack on Kratz. Exactly. See, this is what they should have been doing since the beginning. Oh, Bruh. You only have two ships? Bruh. Okay, this is answering one of the questions I had last episode. Fair. By doing so, though. Okay. D two things. And, and I guess I'll touch on this point really quick, and then we'll jump back onto the other one. If you're not allowed to bring yourself on board, say that this turns into, like, a 6-year, 10-year, 15-year uh, thing, right? Where you're not allowed to come back into this area because people can't take them down, it's overrun, whatever. If you're, like... Move to another area without anything. How long can you survive? Realistically, like give yourself like a number of months. Like, would you be able to find new trade, say, in another area of your country that you currently live in without any issues? Or, <laughs> or do you feel as though there would be like consequences because of this action? So, for example, if if it were me, I automatically already know that there's gonna be a lot of crowding. And I already know that there's going to be a lot of implementation issues that happen that can lead to like people not being happy, people not being able to work, uh, scarcity, of course, so on and so forth because of a mass migration like this that like suddenly happened. So not bringing any form of valuables is so risky in that regard, because at least with valuables, you're able to cover yourself because everything costs money. And if you don't have any cash or anything like that to cover yourself, at the end of the day, it can hurt you, you know? I'll be honest. Yeah, I agree with you too, guys. I don't think it'd, it'd be able to last long. Exactly. Maslow's Pyramid again. And that's exactly the point that I was going to... But Tosh, you're on it today. That's exactly the, the main point. Is like following the, the pyramid that I show you guys in episode one. If you don't have those basic securities met, yeah, life can get chaotic. And even now, like through all the traumatic events and even before, before even the Titans came in, that triangle was already in effect and there was a lot of things that could be missing. I would not run at all... Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, that's good that you're living in a safe area, man. But like, put yourself in a scenario where like, I guess you hide an invasion style, right? 
Like, Titan has just invaded your home and you gotta move to another uh, state or another country in that regard. Kind of terrifying. But anyway, part two, the Titans. This is just like what caught my attention when they're talking about the walls. <laughs> uh, when it when it comes to the walls and uh, all of that in particular, are the Titans like Pokemon? And I hate to throw this out there as a stupid comparison, right? Uh, are the Titans like Pokemon in the regard that they're just like an infinite amount of them out in the wild? Gotta catch them on. <laughs> you guys live in the mountains. Hey, check out. That's not a bad idea. But yeah, like, are they an infinite amount or is there a set amount? You know? That, that is such an important distinction. At least, like, if you're a part of, like, the survey corps that were showed in the first episode, you know, you don't even necessarily need to go ahead and, like, hunt all of these things but keep track of them and that might give you a good number to base yourself as to how many people you need i.e if it takes 30 people to like even harm one then you know that you need like so on for a big number you know maybe there are maybe there isn't yeah i'm just really curious as to like how they're born how they're made what like what are they like it, it's such a unique like concept to have anyway oh bro you have cannons <laughs> Shaquette you're killing me here you're killing me You know what's very interesting about that? Like, just really quick. If you guys actually take a look at, like... I might even back it up for y'all. This is... This might be a good good little exercise for you guys. So, in psychology, right? Whenever you're, like... Especially if you're doing any type of trauma uh, set, like, uh, therapy, right? For example, I had a therapy session with Sushi during When code first hit with a lot of people that were both in... And, in a, like, the hospital, I see you... Uh, like end of life type therapy, so on and so forth. And that, like out of it, people that were experiencing all the anxiety and whatnot. Can you guess what I'm looking at that seems a little, little off about this? Anyone want to take a guess? And the animators did a brilliant job by this. Like as a therapist looking in, I'd probably be able to like instantly tell that like, this is interesting. Anyone want to take a guess? Oh, okay. Let me let me let me put this down real quick then. Yes. So, uh, specifically Mikasa, right? Uh, if you look, everyone's Alsa's eyes like can already be formed. Like the the lines are coming down. It, it's all traumatic events. It's all like you know what have I lost? Uh, grief, trauma, uh, pain, fear. You have all of these different emotions that are like going through, especially with like Aaron's eyes just out in the distance. Yet she's completely calm. So this is like one of those moments where you can tell someone that's been through a traumatic event and like, you know, it's called like in psychology, it's more like the reasoning of home, like where you find home or where you find comfort in, right? Is it a place person t uh, thing? <laughs> Vitosh, that's exactly it. Uh, so like, and, and this is where I'm like, oh, so they're like, this is probably one of those moments where like the animators left this in and it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty awesome little, little thing where you can see everyone like literally going through a different traumatic like situation, like dreading, like sadness, trauma, and she's just really calm. Someone that's like that, you know, it's either they've gone through some shit or, like they're like losing their physical home doesn't mean as much to them. So it's like a very, uh, I don't know how to put it like transient individual or is one thing or another. There's a thousand things to go off of that. It'd be very good to question that. Oh, don't tell me. Are people going to like Titanic it? 
Except reverse Titanic. Oh no, they are. Oh, reverse Titanic, guys. Oh, bro, can that not go any slower? Yes, it does. The lives of the many, man. It sounds horrible, but the lives of the many. Go quick. Bruh. Bruh, there's gold. What is this? Ooh. Ooh. Dripped out Jim Bro Titan. What is the gold titan? The drip titan. Oh, bro, he can sprint? Oh, hell no. Hell no. What are you doing? Bro, how can no one, like, have noticed this titan ever? Like, the big one, too. My dude's on a mission. My dude didn't care. He's just like, I'm gonna break this down. He came in like the Kool-Aid man. Y'all weren't ready. That's rough, brother. That's rough. <laughs> it's the Kool-Aid Titan now, man. Oh, yeah. Great. Great. He's even releasing mist. This guy. This guy. It looks very Dutch, by the way. The like with the windmill and everything. Isn't that a, like always like the saddest mist? Like I don't know how to put it. Thing about humanity in general, like, uh, we as humans tend to get comfy with situations with some sort of protection that we stop, start to ignore uh, its fallacies or like its faults, right? So, for example, the Titanic is completely unthinkable. It sunk, you know, this, like, nation is completely, uh, how would you put it, like, un untouchable pretty sure it's touchable so on and so forth because we get so like used to these concepts these ideas even like for example one of the biggest like things a lot of people fall for my relationship is secure you get so comfortable in it that you stop trying or you start thinking that everything's settled when it's quite not you know uh and it's such a like it's such a base for humanity in general because we tend to fall into these pitfalls where we get super comfy, like, with friendships. Not necessarily, it doesn't even have to be relationship, friendships and so on and so forth. That, like, some of the fundamentals or some of the things that absolutely built that, like, relationship, that friendship, the country, whatever it may be, we tend to ignore the faults of it. And we tend to ignore how to fix it or what would happen, for example, uh, if your relationship breaks down in that situation, what what is what is the next plan, you know? Really important to go ahead and, like, uh, think about things like that. Oh, creepy. Creepy looking motherfucker. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. Guys, this is absolutely fucking dangerous.
like a hundred and ten percent dangerous. So if someone goes through a traumatic event like this and no one is there to go ahead and like quickly transfer or redirect or uh push this like negative energy, this negative this negative thinking, this like, you know, instantly it hit me because I have a lot of kids that like I do therapy with. And like, for example, I had a kid that was sort of like getting bullied a lot and like gone through some traumatic stuff. He got this ideology where now he wants to go ahead and like hit them and like be extremely aggressive, not just with them, but with everyone. Right. And it's called like redirecting that energy, like being able to go ahead and take this mentality, find the flaws in it, be like, so you're telling me that like, you know, for example, uh, I'm going to hit everyone. So would you hit your brother? Oh yeah. If they say, yeah. So would you hit your mom? No. So then you're not going to hit everyone. So then like, let's, let's break it down. You know, it's like going ahead and like taking away this uh, all for nothing mentality, which is what's called in therapy. Right. And it can be such a hard schema to go ahead and break because for example, Say that this is applied, like, as Kraith as puts in there, the Titan killer. Like, he, he's going to go ahead and try and kill all the Titans, right? And he has this, like, hell-bent uh, fire inside of him. What takes it from one second for him to just be like, you know, it's called, like, the redirection of goal. So say that he gets it done. For whatever reason, some reason, he kills all the Titans. That schema, that central schema, it's probably not going to be itched. It's probably not going to go away. So what is what was gonna what is it gonna turn into? I'm gonna kill all walruses now. I'm gonna kill all people that look at me shady. I'm gonna kill you know this like everything of this specific thing you know, uh, and it, that's called like a seriously negative schema that can completely destroy, uh, like it can become toxic as a as an adult, and it can completely shut down like because of this all for nothing. It's like, for example. Hair and the shady looking people. It's not the walruses. Oh no. But no, like, for example, if I was like, uh, all good gamers play Among Us. Please don't take that seriously. But if I was like that, right? And all of a sudden, like, uh, I don't know, Aldrus or Shakat is like, oh no, we're playing Call, like Call of Duty or COD or. A battlefield or something like my all or nothing thinking even though if we're like good long-term friends would turn you guys like would make my either myself distance myself away from you or would turn my situation completely around you know where it's like you know if you're like hey come on let's play cod let's play battlefield let's play i don't know five nights at freddy's or something like that and i'm like no what are you talking about only the best gamers play among us i don't know what you guys are doing duh like, you guys are kind of sus, you know? Stupid things like that. Like, it would take forever, and it'd need a lot of compassion and empathy and a lot of, like, being there in the moment with them to try and, like, see the flaws in, like, the way of thinking to get me to go ahead and, like, switch. Because otherwise, I'd try and distance myself, create boundaries, create tension, so on and so forth. No, no, not Among Us, Minecraft. Hey, yo, Minecraft is pretty good, though. I ain't gonna lie. I've been, been sort of uh, addicted ever since we opened up the server, which you guys should join whenever possible. It's on Discord, I think. Oh, bro, I thought you were a bad guy for a second. That first episode made me think you were a bad guy. Hello. Don't go Bill Cosby on us. Oh gosh. Bro. Aaron got that dream of dad's uh, key. He wants to go and check out his uh, manga collection down in the basement full of uh, top tier waifus, right? <laughs> Aaron got that for dad. <laughs> 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 no, Matash, what, what are you doing? That killed me. 
<laughs> uh, doesn't he need a double shot though? I think he got that uh, Johnson and Johnson then. <laughs> Unless he got two or three shots right there and then. But yeah, no, that's uh. Is, is he just dreaming all this? It's wild. But that's, yeah. I, I'm excited. I'm excited to see where this goes. You got the key. No way. You know what would be hilarious? It's like he goes in there and there's like nothing. <laughs> it's like I just wanted to show you a cool ass basement. Like, you know, I just wanted to show you the underground. <laughs> oh, that would kill me. Or he goes down there and it's like like something silly. It's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. Uh, yeah, it's his dad's porn collection. <laughs> uh, that would be, like, I would love stupid writing like that because it's realistic, you know? Especially if you set up a flag like, hey, why don't I show you what's inside my room, yeah? And, like, it's like, oh, okay, you know, chitons up here, all of this. And then you come back in and there's, like, nothing but, like, my, like, journal that I keep, my self-care journal or something silly. That would be hilarious. I feel like Armin is way too kind for this world. Well, especially with all the trauma and everything. And like all the uh, horrible things that are happening. You know what I love about this, like, let me, you know what I love about, like, scenes like this, like, sort of the background, you know, like, the way that, like, they encapsulate, like, and this is me talking about just, like, thinking through a psychological perspective about framing, right, and especially if you're into film and stuff like that, uh, like, the encapsulation of, like, you know, the importance of these characters, uh, right here, so you got the background characters, and they're all in their little pods, you have this loner over here, you have, like, you know, these two groups, it's, like, very nice in setting up, like, not just the scene, but sort of the theme as to what's happening, um, uh, you know, and it's kind of interesting to see how everyone's in groups, uh, it's, with, except for this guy, like, these are in groups, these guys are in groups, 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 uh, you know, even out here, they're all, like, grouped up together, so, pretty cool, it's pretty, like, a pretty sick detail to show, like, how everyone just comes in together, I'm not sure if that makes sense, like, bro, what are these unicorn-looking motherfuckers? Fuck. That's fucked, dude. What if? And this one sound fucked up. They just like literally shot themselves in the foot. But what if like by eating you and like I don't know, whatever the process inside of their belly if they have a belly or so wherever they go into are like, you turn into one of them by that same process. And now there's 250,000 items out there. Oh, no. The system, it's broken. Yeah, no, that, that would absolute, like, like, I get the whole, like, there's no food, not enough food to go around. But if you're not equipping them right or you don't, like, for example, if we don't know how these things are, like, done, created, exactly like zombies, right? You're sending out this whole group out there with the intention of, like, handling it, and, yeah, it'll, it'll probably cause a lot of issues, like, quickly. Like, yeah, you're freeing up resources, but at what cost? Well, here's the thing, and, and, and like, I'm gonna argue, I'm gonna counter-argue this point, okay? It would have probably been better to send them all out there, yeah? My carnal argument to that is why not use the funds that, like, say that the government has to set up like factories almost immediately 
to build up arsenal, like cannons, weapons, guns, whatever, and then just do a slow push out. You know, yeah, you're still sending them out there, but now you've had the opportunity to go ahead and build, like, and equip all of these individuals, push them out, and at the same time keep this, like, sense of motion going, you know? Because if you just send everyone out there all at once, that's... My dude looks ready to, like, fuck you up. Like, look at this face. Look at this face. Everyone else had such a gentle feature. And this guy looks ready. He's like, I I I'm ready to, like, chow down and go. Like, he <laughs> looks like a typical jarhead. Uh, yeah, he looks pissed. Like, <laughs> he looks more threatening than the instructor. Yeah, who are you? Excuse? Damn, he looks so older. So much older. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, the bloodlust is bad schema that's already being built. Oh. Ah. Yeah, my conspiracy theories are going to go through the roof now. Thanks, guys. Thanks. This is actually such a good anime. I got goosebumps off of that. That was pretty cool. All right, I'm pausing it there. I don't want to see no preview until we're... Uh, <laughs> what a weird position to, to end it. I don't want to see no preview until we're... Uh, until we get there, just because I don't want to overanalyze stuff, you know? That was such a weird position to, like, uh, jump into. <laughs> but anyway... Hope you guys got some time off of that. That was actually a pretty, pretty excellent episode. Uh, I, my mind is full of theories at the moment. I'm going to keep, I'm actually going to start writing them down. And the next episode, we'll go ahead and do a flow chart for it in terms of like what a sociological imagination or Broff and Brenner's ecological theory would look like for something like this. Uh, and I, I think it's just super important that we go ahead and like touch base on that, especially as we go forward. That way you guys know how I'm thinking and why I'm processing certain information the way I did on episode one and how we add on to it sort of through Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But anyway, YouTube, I really appreciate it. You guys want to say bye to YouTube for this one. And then we're going to take a quick minute break to stretch and get ready for the next one. Say bye YouTube on the comments. Bye tubers. Bye. I guess Vimeo people. Some of y'all, some of y'all are Vimeo only, I guess. <laughs> But anyway, yeah. All right. For those of you still on Twitch, let's go ahead and take this minute to stretch out. If you're laying in bed, some deep breathing or something, just a quick minute to stretch because we need to go ahead and yeah, a, a good stretch break as we get ready for the next one.